So uh, I'm Emma and I'm a developer advocate and I really enjoy uh, sharing my knowledge with the community uh, as well as learning from fellow developers. Uh, my talk is uh, called Property-Based Testing the Python Way and uh, this is an introductory talk to, um, to a more effective approach to testing which is called Property-Based Testing. Uh, so it's not expected that you should um, know about property-based testing uh, uh, like, uh, in order to uh, attend um, uh, my uh, like, uh, talk, uh, as well, uh, but uh, as well as uh, no prior knowledge about testing um, uh, is required. But if you have some basic knowledge about just traditional uh, testing about PyTest, I think that will be uh, very helpful. Um, so uh, I hope that you will get uh, curious about this topic um, and uh, let's start. Uh, so this is the agenda. Uh, so I'll talk about what is property-based testing, uh, its advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the tool hypothesis, uh, which is used for pro property-based testing and the takeaways uh, from my talk, uh, I'll conclude with that. Uh, so here's the problem that we have. Uh, our problem is a game uh, which is called the game of hog. And uh, the problem is, uh, so the game is uh, the following. In hog, uh, we have uh, two players, but uh, this is the simplified version uh, that we will uh, actually use it uh, as a problem. Uh, and uh, uh, here we have just one player uh, who rolls two dice. And uh, the score for the turn is uh, the uh, some of the uh, uh, like outcomes um, of two dice. Um, so uh, there are also, uh, for, for example, if it rolls like two and three, then the total score for that turn is five. Uh, and there are two rules that apply to this game. Uh, the first one is if any of the dice outcomes is one, uh, then the total score uh, for that turn is one. So if uh, it rolls like one and four, the total is not five, but it's one or if it uh, rolls and uh, it, the values are like, the outcomes are four and one, again, the total uh, score is one. Uh, and the second uh, rule is that uh, if after rolling the player's score is a prime number, uh, then they gain enough points um, uh, that the, the, like their score uh, increases to the next uh, prime number. And uh, here we're assuming that the player starts at zero. So they have zero score uh, at the moment, and then they're rolling the uh, two dice, and if they uh, get prime number as, uh, as a score for their turn, for example, if they roll two and three and they get five, uh, then the, their score auto automatic, uh, automatically becomes increased to the next prime number, uh, and it becomes seven. So uh, our problem is actually to, uh, we have the implementation in Python uh, for this uh, like small game, and our um, like task, or let's say the, the problem is to actually test uh, these uh, functions that we have uh, and uh, test, uh, test it and check it for their like uh, uh, expected outcomes. So this is the implementation in Python. We have two functions. Uh, so the first one is, uh, uh, is the function for uh, the, the, the turn uh, where uh, uh, the, the function uh, calculates the total score for the turn. And the second one uh, calculates um, the next prime number. Uh, that is here we have, because uh, we were also like assuming that the dice, uh, dices are, dice are like, um, uh, six uh, sided. Uh, so the the outcomes that we can have uh, in terms of like prime numbers are uh, one, two, uh, three, five, uh, so like seven and, and 11. Uh, and uh, these are the cases. So now we, our task is to actually uh, test these functions, right? Test uh, for these functions. Um, so uh, if we, let's say, write it in PyTest, uh, like using PyTest, uh, we can actually uh, write like uh, separate uh, functions uh, for each test cases. Let's say, uh, let's, let's check if the outcome is two and three, uh, is it five or not the expected outcome? If the input is a list of two uh, consisting of two uh, and three. Uh, then let's uh, check for another case. So we can write, uh, uh, like separate functions for each of those cases, but it will be uh, very like uh, uh, 
like time consuming task. Uh, and uh, the alternative is um, with PyTest is a parameterized approach, a parameterized testing. Uh, so PyTest has this uh, function called uh, parameterize and PyTest parameterize uh, makes test writing in PyTest more powerful because it helps uh, cover more uh, scenarios by passing test data as parameters uh, to our test function and then a certain expected outcome. Um, so in this um, parameterized uh, case, uh, what we have, let's, uh, let's see. So uh, for, if you wanna uh, try this for yourselves, you need to have uh, like Python, PyTest and Hypothesis installed on your machines. Uh, so firstly, we're importing PyTest and uh, we're uh, using the function parameterize from PyTest. Uh, we have our uh, like uh, function that we want to test. It's called test score. And uh, you, we write this function and then uh, it comes like uh, after um, the PyTest uh, decorator, which uh, from which we actually call the parameterize function. And so the, the approach here is that uh, we're giving some fixed input, uh, input data, and we're expecting some uh, fixed output. Uh, here, we're giving uh, four, uh, um, um, like a tuple, uh, a list of four and one, and we're expecting one. Uh, another case, the test case, uh, two and four, we're expecting six, etc. We can have many test cases in one function, so uh, th this is a better approach than uh, just writing like separate functions for each test case because it's a bit like shorter and um, also faster. But uh, here imagine that uh, if we also add like other like test cases as well, it will become just a, like a huge like long list of uh, like, test cases and it won't be readable at all. Uh, also this uh, has other cons um, as well. Um, and um, the, the cons are uh, that uh, for example, if this test fails uh, for one like test case, um, then uh, we, we will um, claim that uh, we will we'll, like um, conclude from this that uh, our claim is false. But if all the tests pass, uh, we can't say that our um, claim is like correct. We can just say that all the tests pass so our, our like functional work. Uh, actually, we're making, uh, what we're uh, doing here, we're uh, just making a strong claim. Uh, we're saying that if uh, using specific like examples and concrete uh, scenarios, we're um, making a general claim about our like uh, test function and uh, about the behavior of, of our software. Uh, and so this is not very like precise. And um, you also see like there's so many like details uh, in the test and so, uh, this is uh, this is a cone of this like approach, um, and uh, it's not very effective to test this way to actually generalize from a, a specific example and uh, from a concrete scenario uh, about the behavior of the software because we we may be uh, like wrong. Also, uh, here as you can see, um, another like, like uh, cone is that uh, a lot depends on, on us, on humans. So we should actually um, uh, uh, like um, do this like manual task and uh, think of all these like test cases and uh, write all of these. And we might um, we miss very important like edge cases, for example. And so uh, we can't uh, actually conclude from this that. Um, like everything or uh, maybe uh, the, the most important things about the behavior of our software and system. And so um, this, is, this has uh, like many uh, like drawbacks, um, this approach. Um, so in this case, our function uh, will execu uh, execute um, for our given like values and inputs. And this is the traditional approach that most of us use. Uh, but as I said, that uh, all, uh, along with uh, like all these cones, um, there is also another thing that uh, the code is long and it's also uh, difficult to debug. And so um, uh, here uh, comes another like a better and more effective approach to testing, uh, which is called property-based testing. So property-based uh, tests, they check the truth truthfulness of the property um, of the software using uh, concrete scenarios and uh, they uh, generalize them, abstracting away the details. So they allow us to design cleaner tests uh, that actually uh, specify our software's behavior better. 
Um, and uh, property based testing has a property, which is a statement that uh, we want to uh, check us. Um, that we uh, actually claim uh, to be tr to hold uh, to always hold true, and we're interested in uh, actually testing and uh, like checking uh, for uh, for um, for a property of a software, and uh, we're actually uh, interested in the truth truthfulness uh, of that claim. So, uh, if we compare this approach to uh, to the uh, previous approach, the, like the traditional appro approach, uh, we will see that here we're actually uh, doing the opposite. We're um, focusing on the general claim, and uh, this is uh, more effective because uh, when we're focusing on the general claim, uh, we can better understand the system and how the system works and how the software behaves. If we actually want to uh, uh, like uh, check for for our general uh, claim. And um, so uh, when we're checking for, uh, for elements of a property that should always be true, uh, rather than actually writing uh, uh, like um, each uh, test, like um, each, each value uh, that we want to test uh, for, um, we allow the program uh, and uh, to test uh, for a variety of input values in a single test uh, so in property-based uh, testing, uh, we are actually generating the input data. We're not specific, we're not doing a fixed uh, data, uh, test data. So uh, when we're um, generating this uh, data, it's very like uh, random, but at the same time, it's predictable and we'll see how. Um, and so property-based uh, testing, um, uh, if we like compare it to to the previous one, like example based uh, testing, it uh, as I said focuses on the general uh, claim, uh, and when it uh, abstracts away the details, uh, it becomes even more powerful uh, than uh, the parameterized one. Uh, and um, here we can uh, see uh, the advantages. So uh, the focus on general claim, uh, as I said, it helps. Uh, it helps. Um, debug uh, the code like more easily. Uh, it also has better implementation. It helps us understand uh, the requirements better. Uh, in parameterized uh, approach, uh, we're not able to understand the requirements better because we're actually uh, specifying the examples that we want to test. And uh, when we have here a better implementation, it helps us like uncover the assumptions, uh, the hidden assumptions, and it helps us understand the requirements better because we're focusing on the general claim. We generate the input data. So when we generate the input data, we're testing for a variety of inputs in one single test. Uh, we're actually uh, covering uh, more domain space. And in that case, we're also covering the edge cases like automatically uh, versus in uh, like parameterized case, we might like miss some like important edge cases. And it has less amount of code, so we have a cleaner test suite. So uh, actually, the, the main thing about property-based testing is uh, automation, automation of the process of uh, specifying every single input uh, for, for an expected output that we humans do. And we're uh, just automating that process with property-based testing. So we're letting the computer uh, do that test for us, and we're focusing on more like creative uh, part of um, understanding the software uh, behavior and understanding um, all of these uh, like uh, like uh, the, the details and wh why the test failed or um, all these like edge cases um, like uh, because the, the, the automation helps us. Uh, and uh, again, we'll see how in more details um, later. Um, so, um, uh, as I said, um, uh, so when we have like cleaner tests and uh, when we uh, better understand the software behavior, uh, uh, in that case, uh, we can actually uh, like suggest uh, better, like uh, suggest better, um, like uh, solutions for our like uh, uh, functions for our like problem. And, um, uh, we we want to do that uh, with a tool uh, which is called hypothesis. Actually, uh, you can do property based testing if you've ever uh, like automated uh, a testing uh, like process. Uh, you've done property based testing, uh, but um, the tool hypothesis really 
helps uh, helps in that process. Uh, so you don't uh, you don't have to do it with a tool, but a hypothesis um, uh, as a tool is really helpful. And uh, the focus of my talk is actually hypothesis. Uh, hypothesis is uh, this Python library designed uh, to help you write property based tests, and you can pick a stall hypothesis, and you uh, you can uh, write uh, write the test and run the test uh, with PyTest. A hypothesis uh, doesn't have, um, it like isn't a test runner. It, it runs in um, in a uh, testing uh, framework. Uh, you can do it in your like testing framework. It can be PyTest, it can be unit test or other. Uh, we will do it in PyTest. Um, so you can actually run it with PyTest. Uh, hypothesis is a very good tool. And we'll see uh, what uh, advantages um, it has um, and uh, so it is uh, like for the Python implementation if you want to do property based test testing in Python uh, you, you can use hypothesis as a tool. Um, so uh, here is the uh, code snippet for our uh, like first fu uh, like function in th that we had uh, for uh, when we actually want to cal calculate the total score uh, for the turn. Uh, so what uh, what uh, we need to do? We need to uh, import from uh, uh, hypothesis uh, the 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 things that we need. That those are like the given strategies, and I'll explain uh, those uh, a bit later. Uh, so um, uh, yeah, I want I want to focus on uh, the actually. Uh, the things that hypothesis offer uh, offers, and those are uh, the first things are uh, the strategies. So as I said, in property based testing, we're um, uh, generating the input data. So uh, with hypothesis, we can easily do that uh, because it has strategies uh, where you can actually call this, uh, which uh, helps you generate uh, the, the sort of data that you want. For example, if you uh, want integers you can um, call this function from strategies and it will generate a range of like integers for you. And you can specify the range. Uh, if you if you want a list, you can do list. There, there is also like text, um, et cetera, uh, booleans, uh, et cetera. Um, so uh, once you have uh, like the hypothesis, um, once you uh, installed and imported all these things, then you use given, which is the decorator, uh, you, you use it to generate the data uh, in, in the brackets. Uh, you call this um, like uh, functions. Uh, here we're generating a list of integers. And um, then you write the test func uh, function, uh, the function that you want to test. And so here we're uh, writing the test score. We, we, we're interested to uh, test that uh, function, uh, which calculates the total score. Uh, so as you can see, when we're running this test, uh, we are getting a falsifying, uh, like example, an error, assertion error. It's written, so so the, the test actually failed. So it's written, falsifying example, L equals one one. So what does this mean? Actually what hy hypothesis did is, so we're, uh, we have a claim here. The claim is that we want to assert that, uh, that uh, when we like, uh, uh, call this function like take turn that it calculates uh, the the total score. It should equal to the sum yes of the um, out, uh, the dice out, outcomes of, uh, of the dice, and uh, it just failed because uh, we didn't um, actually cover this like uh, edge case one one where we have one. It's not. It shouldn't be like two yes. It should be one. Uh, the interesting thing about hypothesis is that if um, if we uh, run it like uh, once uh, and uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, like the, the test pass, uh, passes, then um, uh, if we run it again, it might again uh, it may again like pass. Uh, and if we run uh, one more time, it uh, it may like pass. But uh, that doesn't mean that because it automatically generates lots of, like uh, uh, various like uh, data like every, every time different uh, like. Uh, like a range of data, uh, that doesn't actually mean that it's not going to fail at some point. And uh, we, we do it uh, over and over. And for example, when it fails, then if we run it again, we run it, it will fail again. And um, uh, it will fail again. 
and it will give the same error. Uh, and the, the, the thing is that Hypothesis actually stores this like error in, in a local database. So when we run it again, it gives the same error. Uh, it gives this, and it will give the same error until we fix it. And so this is uh, some repeatability, which gives some predictability. And so, uh, yes, Hypothesis is random because we're generating random data, uh, but you know, uh, giving us an, you know, we give uh, as an input random uh, data every time in one test, but uh, when it fails, it, it actually uh, lets us know that uh, we, this, is, this is an important like, case to, to, to fix. Uh, and so uh, we, we know that if, uh, if we don't fix it, we will get the same error. So it looks the same error. And also, uh, as you can see, um, it, it, this process is also called like simplification. Uh, it, it gave one error, but it kind of simplified the process. There are so many others like as well, because it's like, uh, randomly generating um, inputs, uh, but it, it simplified the error and uh, it reported us. So uh, the reporting, simplification, and uh, repeatability are also important uh, things about hypotheses that uh, the tool is um, that uh, make the tool uh, more powerful. Um, and so. Uh, yeah, why choose hypothesis? Uh, as I said, is it to generate data with strategy? and tools. So um, hypothesis has the strategies that you can use to uh, easily generate the input data. You can also, uh, it also has tools that you can use to uh, actually create your own strategies. It's easy to write, uh, it, 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 as you saw that it's like um, a less, uh, less line of like, code uh, compared to a parameterized uh, one. Um, uh, as a property based test, but also like hypothesis makes it easy. You just use the decorator, you give the input data, and then you under it, you uh, you have your uh, test function. Uh, simplification process, as I said, about uh, errors. It helps us to actually um, think about our like general claim and understand the truth truthfulness um, uh, of it. Um, so uh, another is uh, that it is robust at finding edge cases. So we found the edge case is one one. It can uh, can be like a, um, an empty string or an empty value, etc. These are the edge cases, and it's uh, very robust at finding those and letting us know that uh, you know this is this is an error and you should fix it. This is important. And so here, compared to like uh, the traditional approach, we're actually. Uh, uh, it, 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 it actually um, helping us to understand what, what is more important and uh, what is less important uh, because we don't have too many details. Um, but um, the thing is also uh, that um, it has uh, some cons as well, like property-based testing. Uh, I do think that it's uh, way better than the traditional one because it has so many like advantages. But uh, there are also cons about it. Uh, the first one is that it's more difficult to debug uh, when you have a, rent, a, a, rent, uh, a huge range of inputs. Uh, in any case, it's, it's, it's hard uh, to debug because it's, it's randomized, it's predictable. You can understand with what errors uh, is going to, um, you're going to get with like high probability, but uh, it's still um, it's a bit difficult. Uh, it's difficult to design uh, because it's a lot. Uh, the creative part is um, is like, like you know, the creative part is up to us and depends on us. Uh, uh, the the automation uh, is um, for the computer. Uh, it's uh, slower to run, um, and uh, it's not always the best choice. Uh, of course, uh, you can't use property based testing in any. Um, in any case, in for uh, like uh, every problem, uh, uh, there, uh, in some cases uh, when you just need to put um, some like very small like fixed uh, uh, like input uh, for your te test fu uh, function, uh, maybe uh, the traditional approach is better. But uh, property based uh, testing um, can be used for many like uh, problems and uh, many like functions, um, and so it's not always the best choice, but uh, it's like recommended. Um, thank you very much. Uh, and if you are uh, interested in this topic in hypothesis, if you're interested in adapting it to your uh, like code base, uh, or if you're interested in exploring uh, this topic, uh, just feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I will be very happy to get in touch with you and um, and connect. Uh, 
uh, because I'm interested in uh, further uh, researching this topic. Uh, and I hope you got curious about it and you enjoyed my talk. Uh, and if you have questions, um, feel free to ask. I'll be happy to answer. Thank you very much. Okay, does anyone have a question? If so, please could you go to the front and line up? Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks for the talk. Really uh, good to see something like this in action. Um, what I'm wondering about is when you design your tests, what's your thinking in like approaching the tests for like something that that's probably fairly complicated even so you're testing a complicated piece of business logic and now you want to write a test for it that's generic uh, mm -hmm. obviously the go-to or the the pitfall is i could now write my business logic again or implement the same thing in my test uh, what's your approach there to make sure that doesn't happen and how do i test instead uh, thanks for the question. Uh, as I said, it's a bit difficult to write in this like approach. Um, um, I think that uh, the most, uh, I think that the tool uh, tool actually helps in, uh, you know, like, uh, well, like when, when you test uh, for, uh, for that, um, uh, like when you write the test and then uh, like actually check uh, for the truthfulness and you, uh, you, you get, uh, like you get some uh, like um, outputs, then based on that you uh, understand how to further improve it. And I wouldn't say that uh, it actually hurts the business logic. I say it actually helps uh, to better uh, like to, to improve to improve it to better understand uh, the uh, software's behavior. And my approach is uh, I do I do think it's it's a bit difficult uh, to uh, to actually test a general claim like focus on the general claim. Uh, but I think that if you kind of start like small and uh, test like some small uh, like pieces uh, of the like business logic, then uh, then um, expand from that. Uh, it will be, it, it will be like less hurtful. Um, I don't have a one like uh, specific strategy um, for it. Uh, I just um, try to uh, better understand uh, different like approaches and um like about this uh, actually testing uh, method um yeah i think that um probably uh if i answered i hope i answered um yeah thank you yeah sure do, do we have a question remotely no okay then go on uh, hi uh ghostwriter is yeah yeah <clears throat> It's been a part of our hypothesis for, for, for quite a while. A ghostwriter tries to write tests for you. Have you ever tried Ghostwriter? And what what are your experience with it? Uh, I haven't tried it. So looking at the input generation part of using hypothesis, it seems to me that this approach is a lot more applicable if you want to test functions that operate on numerical quantities and maybe output quantities. But if I had uh, a routine that processes, I don't know, dictionaries or strings, and if I wanted to, I guess, declare how those types of inputs are generated, it wouldn't be as scalable. That's my impression. Is that fair? Or maybe I'm missing something? Yes, uh, you can. Of course, strategies uh, do have like uh, different like sorts of data. You can generate different sorts of data, not just like integers. But uh, I think that like uh, probably for like integers, it's more like common as well as um, I mean, probably like easier. But uh, you 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 can also um, do for other like sorts of data for any sorts of data. Hypothesis allows it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have time for one more question. Uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, quick question. How do you reconcile the random nature of the uh, space exploration of the input space exploration with the with continuous integrations need to have stability? Um, uh, can you repeat the question? Uh, um, um, you, you have, uh, when you run hypothesis, I understand you randomly explore the input space. 
uh, which mm -hmm. is fine for me as a developer locally, but because as you say, you have a database where it stores the space that I can reproduce it. But what about on continuous integration? What if I'm running this where I'm you know, in the cloud, CI, where I don't have that database persisted between runs? Is there a way to stabilize it so that I don't get a test failure today and then same test passes tomorrow and then again fails the day after that? Yeah, this is a good question, and yes, you can. Uh, it, it allows, like, you can adapt it to your uh, code base and any kind of, and you know, it, it allows for continuous integration, uh, and you can do that. That's possible, uh, but uh, that and that's also a part of like uh, I further want to like research that that how to adapt uh, to your code base and um, yeah, how to actually deal with that problem. But you can. That's possible. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I, here's no more question. And otherwise, if there are more questions, um, will you stay in the breakout room for more questions? Yes, sure. Perfect. Then um, thank you for your talk. And uh, let's give her a warm applause to the end. And.